Hi guys, Dr. Kitty here. I'm currently a doctor that works at a clinic that specializes in adult ADHD. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you the key things you need to know when considering the medication guanfacine in the treatment of adult ADHD. Now, guanfacine is also known under some brand names. One is Intuniv, which is a long-acting version, and Tenex, which is a short-acting version. It is a non-stimulant medication, and the main clinical situations that I tend to use it are rejection-sensitive dysphoria, as an adjunct to stimulants in patients that have significant sleep issues, patients that do not tolerate stimulants or adamoxetine, or patients that still have symptoms despite maximal therapy with stimulant medication. I'd like to start with the first main reason that I use guanfacine, which is for rejection sensitive dysphoria. This is a condition that a lot of doctors don't know about, and it's because it's not found in the DSM, which is sort of the Bible for psychiatric diagnoses. It describes an extreme emotional sensitivity when someone perceives that they have been rejected or criticized by someone important in their life. Now it's normal for anyone to not feel great if they've been criticized or rejected, but rejection sensitive dysphoria describes a much more intense emotion. This may lead to patients with adult ADHD to stop trying in things that may lead to rejection or criticism, or they live a life of constantly trying to be people pleasers. Rejection sensitive dysphoria can be difficult to treat and may not respond well to stimulant medication or psychotherapy. Guanfacine is one of two medications, clonidine and the other, that can reduce these intense emotions seen in rejection sensitive dysphoria. The next situation I tend to use guanfacine is in patients with adult ADHD and concurrent sleep issues. Unlike the stimulant medications, which can impair the ability to sleep, Guanfacine has a tendency to be very sedating. Therefore, guanfacine can be used in isolation to help with sleep, or it can be used in combination with the stimulant medications to block the sleep side effects. The final two situations where guanfacine can be used are in patients that cannot tolerate stimulant therapy or adamoxetine, or patients that still have symptoms despite maximal stimulant therapy. These situations are rare, and guanfacine is not as effective generally as the stimulant medication, when it comes to improving symptoms of attention, concentration, and organization. So how does guanfacine work? Well, guanfacine is known as an alpha-2 receptor antagonist, meaning it blocks the effects of a chemical known as norepinephrine or noradrenaline, depending on the country that you're from. The exact mechanism of how guanfacine works in adult ADHD is not completely understood, but it's thought that it modulates some signaling in the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is an area at the front of the brain and is responsible for executive functioning, such as attention, memory, concentration, organization, and emotional regulation. This is also the area of the brain where it is thought that patients with adult ADHD have their dysfunction. By the way, if you find this information helpful, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. So how do you take guanfacine? Well, usually when I use guanfacine in adult ADHD, I tend to use the long acting version. I usually take it at nighttime before bed. This is a tablet that should be swallowed and not chewed or crushed because this will affect the modified release properties of the long acting version. The long acting version of guanfacine comes in one milligram, two milligram, three milligram, and four milligram. As usual, we start at the lowest dose and titrate up slowly as we need it to minimize side effects. The most common side effects that are seen with guanfacine include sedation, dry mouth, nausea, headache, and dizziness. Guanfacine also lowers blood pressure and it's really important that patients taking this medication have their blood pressure monitored regularly by their doctor. Another thing to be mindful of when taking guanfacine is that it can be quite sedating, so other sedating substances should be avoided, such as alcohol, benzodiazepines, and other sleeping tablets. Another note I like to make about guanfacine in adult ADHD is that the majority of studies at the time of recording this video has been done in patients only under the age of 17. Therefore, a lot of the information in this video is extrapolated from these studies and also just from my personal clinical experience. So if you think guanfacine is for you, please see your doctor for your specific case. If you'd like some more information on other adult ADHD medication, I've done some other reviews. Please see the links in the description below and I'll see you in the next video.